Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about animal cell culture media. So cells need media to grow. Obviously the nutrients which are important for cellular growth should be present in this media, right? So in this video we would look at the exact media components and how they promote cellular growth. You might be familiar with these kind of pink bottles or reddish bottles where there is media, right? And you put it on cells and you expect the cells would grow and divide. But have you ever wondered what is exactly inside those bottles or what is exactly inside those fluids? This video would give you an overview of that. So let us review the requirements of a cell to grow optimally in a culture condition. So the cells need controlled temperature, which is 37 degrees centigrade provided by the cell culture incubator because that is the temperature cell needs inside our body to grow as well. Other than that, it needs a substratum for attachment, especially if the cells are epithelial cells, they need a substratum for attachment, which is inside our body, which is the basement membrane. Now, appropriate growth medium, which would have the growth factor is required. And lastly, the incubator is required, which would maintain the pH and osmolarity of the media. So different cells have different growth requirements because all the cells are not dividing every time and each cell has different kind of metabolism going on. So their growth requirements are also different. For example, a kidney cell, a neuron or a hepatocyte, they have a very different growth requirements. But at least at a simplistic level, all of them need something in common and let's review that part. So a minimal media would have the following components. It would have some kind of antibiotic cocktails which would ensure that there would be no growth of other microorganisms, glucose as a carbon source, amino acids as nitrogen source, vitamins for optimal growth and nutrients, serum which would contain hormone and growth factors, buffers which would maintain the pH of this solution, attachment factors which would help the cell to get attached to the substratum and lastly some kind of inorganic salts which would work like micronutrients for the cells. So all these factors are important in the cell culture media for the cellular growth. Now the proportion of these components might vary depending upon the cells that we want to culture but these are the basics one. Also, the cell culture media has particular indicators such as phenol red, which indicates from a range of pH 6.5 to pH 8.5. This phenol red tells us that the condition of media is good or bad. For example, at pH 6.5, the media would be yellowish in color and that would tell us instantly that the media requires a change as soon as possible or there could be contamination in the media. That is why this looks like this kind of pale yellow. Now if it looks like this orangish color then within a day it should be changed. If it is extremely reddish then the pH should be around 7.4 and it's perfect. It's, no, it's not requiring any change immediately. Now if it is pinkish that means the CO2 concentration is somehow altered and CO2 supply need to be checked. So all of these different pH range indicates several important aspects of the cellular health or the condition of the media. So that is why putting a indicator in the media is crucial. Now cell culture media can be divided into two types natural media or artificially or synthetic media. Now natural media has growth factors other important components of cellular growth but these media are actually undefined. That means highly variable. It can support the cellular growth but for experimental point of view or for a laboratory research point of view these are not really useful. So artificially synthesized media would have all the components which are balanced and batch to batch there would be very less variation. This would ensure the reproducibility of the experiment as well. So the all the components that we have mentioned earlier would be present in a particular proportion. 
no matter which batch we would use, the proportion would remain the same. That's why using artificial media for culturing cell in lab is really important. Now, let me tell you a very important component of the media. And that is why people are saying serum containing media or serum free media. Serum generally is derived from fetus of bovines. And now this fetal bovine serum would be really important for animal cell culture because they have all the necessary growth factors and hormones which would augment the cellular growth. Let me tell you in details what serum contains. So generally with a cell culture media, 10% FPS is added. But what's the role of FPS? Let me tell you Frank that all the cells need growth factor for division. Without the growth factor, cells really cannot grow or divide. So serum contains mitogens. Mitogens are substance which would promote mitosis or which would promote growth. So generally these mitogens work in a complicated signaling pathway and they give rise to specific cyclin and CDK complexes such as cyclin D. Now this cyclin D helps the cell cycle progression from G1 to S phase. As a result what happens? The cell divides and grows inside the media. Now, if mitogens are absent, cyclin D would be not produced in adequate amounts that would not allow the cell to divide properly. And that is how the cells cannot grow inside the media condition. So it's absolutely essential that we provide some kind of source of these growth factors or mitogen. It's not necessarily have to be serum because serum is also variable in terms of composition because it is extracted from an animal, right? So nowadays, there is a huge usage of serum-free media. Serum-free media would also have all these necessary factors, but in a synthetic fashion, like all these serum-free media are synthetic media. That means growth factors are there, but they are artificially added in a particular proportion. Even better, right? Yes, it is better, but the price of these media are quite high. So the commonly used media is commonly used serum replacement is known as knockout serum replacement. So which would not have the components of the serum, but it would have all the necessary factors in adequate fashion. Other than that, there could be special additives like special cell types requires uh, maybe concentrated uh, lipids because many cell types such as stem cells requires lipid concentrates to grow. Non-essential amino acids could be also required by several cell types, but it really depends upon cell to cell. Many of the uh, researchers use fungizone or pen strip for prevention of growth of fungus inside the cell culture. So let us talk a little bit about the contamination part because cell culture media is so much enriched that other more microorganisms such as bacteria, fungus or even micro mycoplasma can grow inside the cell culture media. That is why it is important to put proper uh, antibiotic cocktail or antifungal cocktail such that these growth would not happen because we want our cell to grow not these contaminations. So let us look at the contaminations in bit more details. So this is how a bacterial contamination look like under the microscope. You can see these small uh, uh, dot like structures which are floating all around the media are actually bacteria. There are mycoplasma shown in the figure, mycoplasma contamination is detrimental for the cell culture and they are highly contagious. Then fungal contamination, you can always see the fungal hyphae developed in your cell culture dish. So all of these conditions, if you see, then these cells cannot be grown any further and they have to be discarded in a proper biohazard bag. And this is how you need to culture your cells. So I hope this, uh, kind of summarize all the important topics regarding cell culture media. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.